Thank you for inviting us here today. As we all know, there's been a search for alternative ingredients to fish meal and fish oil for decades now, and there's been a lot of different approaches used around the world. What I want to present here today is the approach we've used within the Agricultural Research Service of the U.S. for about the last 15 years in looking for these alternatives. First, we have to look at what does fish meal carry with it that other plant-based ingredients may not have. And this, of course, includes a variety of nutrients we'll talk about, but also there is a palatability attraction factor that fish meal provides, including taste of the primary ingredients, but also there's a lot of work going into enhancers such as extracts, flavors, hydrosylates, even molasses has been used in the past. But then there's the texture of the feed as well that affects palatability, and this is more extrusion technology, which will be covered in another presentation. So as far as the nutrients found in fish meal, I'll jump to the end. We found a variety of different nutrients that fish meal carries that plant-based ingredients don't, including vitamins, water-soluble, fat-soluble vitamins, as well as inositol, uh, macro minerals, magnesium, sodium, and potassium and the amino acids lysine, methionine, and threonine become the first limiting as we replace animal products with plant-based products and taurine is also important. Fatty acids and phospholipids I'm not going to cover today along with the micro minerals such as copper, zinc, iron, selenium. These are also important when replacing fish meal but we don't have time for that today. Before I get into that the other important thing that we feel should be considered when formulating fish meal and fish oil free feeds is the parent digestibility coefficients of these alternative ingredients. And now I just would like to give you a few examples of where this can be important. Uh, these studies have taken place looking at a variety of different ingredients. The slides are set up to show the ingredients across the X axis an apparent digestibility coefficient, that is the percentage of the nutrient that is absorbed by the fish. Red bars are shown, are the protein apparent digestibility coefficients. Energy is shown in yellow, dry matter in blue, and phosphorus in green. And the asterisks denote a difference from anchovy meal, which turned out to be very high relative to the other fish meals. And the fact that there's difference among fish meals really isn't that surprising. We know there is a difference. Sardine meal is usually very similar to anchovy meal. In this instance, it wasn't. But it does indicate the importance of formulating on apparent digestibility coefficients because if you replaced anchovy meal with menhaden fish meal, fair and average quality, on a, a crude protein basis, fish performance probably would not be as good as if you replaced it on a digestible protein basis. Next, if we look at poultry products, we see a similar trend. That is, um, apparent digestibility coefficients are lower for this particular so source of poultry byproduct meal relative to anchovy meal. We do know there's a lot of variability within poultry byproduct meal. Uh, poultry blood meal and feather meal also had differences in dry matter and, or excuse me, in energy and in phosphorus content. The phosphorus digestibilities for poultry blood and poultry feather are very high, and this is only because the phosphorus content of those ingredients is very low and so there's a lot of variation and it comes out very high in these in vivo experiments. All these studies were done with live fish not with in vitro tests. Finally looking at plant protein concentrates we see wheat gluten meal, soy protein concentrate, corn gluten meal, rice protein concentrate 70% barley protein concentrate, 25%, soybean meal, and cottonseed meal, with a decreasing amount of apparent digestibility coefficients for each of these ingredients. Soybean meal and cottonseed meal, of course, are not protein concentrates. 
and so they have higher fiber and, and lower digestibility. But again, this emphasizes the, the point that it, you can formulate more effective diets when using apparent digestibility coefficients as appeared, compared to using crude protein levels and amino acid levels. So when formulating fish meal-free diets, we balance for digestible protein, lipid, and phosphorus, and also balance the digestible lysine, methionine, and threonine levels. But then these diets are also supplemented with taurine at either 0.5% for trout or 1% for uh, marine fish such as yellowtail and white sea bass. <clears throat> Potassium, sodium, and magnesium is found to be low in plant-based ingredients, and I'll show you data on that in just a few minutes. There's also a benefit of supplementing with inositol in diets that contain less than 25% poultry meal or fish meal in the feed. So where we are at this point is I can basically break down the different species into three groups. The first group is effective. We can be effective at feeding plant-based, no animal products type diets. This includes rainbow trout, yellow perch. The second group, we have three species of salmon, walleye, arctic char, cobia, and pompano. For these species, we need poultry byproduct meal. You get a growth boost. There's apparently still something in poultry byproduct meal that we're not supplementing or balancing for. And then third group, yellowtail, white sea bass, sable fish, and I add Kobe and Pompano here because we haven't done the studies with spirulina, but we've seen that the addition of spirulina to a fish meal free diet results in much faster growth and better survival. And I'll go over some of that data now. But first we're gonna talk about rainbow trout and yellow perch. We developed most of this information with rainbow trout and then applied it to other groups. In the first experiment, we wanted to look at the effect of vitamin premix in fish meal and plant-based diets because analysis showed there were differences in the amount of vitamins that they carried. So we had two base protein mixes, a fish meal based and a plant based with four vitamin premixes and that equals eight diets. Those vitamin premixes included no added vitamins as a negative control. The National Research, Research Council's recommend, recommended levels of vitamins. And then the third premix is each vitamin is adjusted individually for survival through the extruder. We know that today's modern pro processing techniques can cause vitamin loss and the premix can be most cost effectively formulated if these are adjusted individually as compared to the fourth premix, which is just the NRC recommendations times 2.5%, which, re which relates to a 40% retention of all vitamins going through the extruder. So this was a 16 week study after nine weeks of feeding, there was high enough mortality in the, both the plant-based group and the fish meal-based group with no added vitamins that this group was terminated. In the trout-fed uh, plant-based diets on the left side of the slide here, you can see the first deficiency symptom that appeared was clubbed gills exhibiting a panathenic acid deficiency where with the fish meal based diets, this panathenic acid deficiency was not seen, but a vitamin E deficiency was seen. And we know vitamin E is an antioxidant. This suggests that the fish meal was carrying with it some oxidized lipids that might have used up that vitamin E, causing this first symptom and mortality in the fish meal based, indicating that of course, fish meal does carry with it different vitamins than the uh, plant-based diets. But at the end of 16 weeks, we saw there was significant effect of vitamin premix on energy retention efficiency. That, <coughs> that is the percentage of energy that is retained, that is fed to the fish that is retained in the, the carcass. 
that we see a significant increase in both the plant-based and the fish meal-based diet when going from the NRC recommended levels to the adjusted individually ARS levels in both the plant and the fish meal based uh, premixes, but the no additional benefit by going to the NRC times 2.5. So there's an economic saving by using the ARS levels as well as increased efficiency and survival. And of course, there's no column here for the no added vitamin premix because this is at 16 weeks and those fish had already left the experiment. So in the next trial, we wanted to look at the effect of added macro minerals and inositol on growth and survival of trout fed plant-based diets. And there were three diets in this comparison. The first diet included supplementation of potassium, sodium, magnesium, and inositol, and will be designated on future slides as plus MM plus I. The second premix is uh, did not include the macro mineral, so it's a minus MM plus I because it did have an acetal. And then the third premix is again the negative control with no added macro minerals and no inositol. Here are the results of the effect of diet on weight gain, protein retention efficiency, and energy retention efficiency. Here we see weight gain grams per fish during the 16 week study. And there was a significant difference between adding macro minerals and inositol versus not adding macro minerals and inositol in weight gain, but also in protein retention efficiency, energy or retention efficiency, and I believe also feed efficiency. Uh, so this suggests that there is an advantage, or this demonstrates there is an advantage of supplementing with these macro minerals and inositol when feeding plant-based diets with no animal products. And finally, amino acid supplementation. It's well known that plant-based ingredients have a different amino acid profile than animal-based ingredients, so that when substituting plant-based into an animal-based formula, you're going to have to supplement with essential amino acids. And using the amino acid pattern of trout muscle as a profile, we see that lysine, methionine, and threonine become most limiting. And these amino acids are available synthetically, can be added, and have been shown to significantly increase growth rate. We also know that animal products carry with it a high level of taurine. And taurine is a circulating amino acid involved in osmoregulation and fat digestion. And you see a growth improvement. I'll show you some data with rainbow trout, but it can also be a matter of life and death in marine species if not enough taurine is provided in the diet. So in this study, we looked at the effect of adding taurine to the diet of rainbow trout uh, at 0.51 and 1.5% of the diet. We have weight gain on the y-axis of this slide, and there's a fish meal based series that is shown in the red bars and the white bars are in plant-based. As you can see, the addition of taurine to fish meal based series resulted in relatively no change in weight gain across those diets. However, within the plant-based series, the addition of taurine significantly improved growth rate at 0.5%, but no further improvement was seen at one or 1.5% percent of the diet. With regards to feed conversion ratio, we saw a similar pattern that is no effect of supplemental taurine in a fish meal based diet, presumably because the fish meal carries with it enough taurine, where the plant based diets, we saw a significant improvement in feed conversion ratio as we added taurine to the diet as compared to no added taurine. And Protein retention efficiency, which is a measurement of protein utilization, also showed a similar pattern that increased protein retention with added taurine to the plant-based diets and no effect within the fish meal-based series. Again, showing the differences in nutrients carried by the two primary sets of ingredients. 
So when we formulate a fish meal based diet, we'll have a certain number of ingredients, but a plant based diet, because of the need to balance and supplement these ingredients shown in blue here are different than in a fish meal based diet. And we also use the trout muscle here to determine the supplementation level, the balancing level of lysine, methionine, and threonine. And finally, on to the third group of species. This includes yellowtail and white sea bass. These species are, have been shown, and I'll show you the data here in a minute, that uh, growth rate is enhanced greatly with adding poultry byproduct meal and spirulina to the diet. This, these species also benefit from added taurine to prevent green liver. In this study, we had eight experimental diets. Again, you'll see the trend, a fish meal based series and a fish meal free series. The fish meal based diet, we tried to formulate that similarly to a typical commercial diet at the time, uh, including fish meal, soybean meal, blood meal, wheat flour, and then added nutrients. The fish meal series included poultry byproduct meal corn protein concentrate, and, and wheat flour. In each of these series, we added either 0, 10, 20, or 30 percent at the expense of the other two protein ingredients. They were all reduced in an equal proportion so that the amino acid contribution from each of the intact sources is in the same ratio in each of the four diets within that diet series. And so the results will be shown like this with the fish meal based diets shown on the left side of the screen with 0, 10, 20, 30 percent of the diet and fish meal free with 0, 10, 20, 30 percent spirulina added to the diet. Scredding marine growers, the far right column, this is a commercial reference diet that was added to see how our experimental diets were performing and percent gain from initial weight is shown on the y-axis. Here are the results. We found about a 200% gain in the fish meal base series. However, we got significant increase in weight gain when adding spirulina to a fish meal free diet. And weight gain was significantly higher for the 20 and 30% than in the fish meal base series or in the case of 30% added spirulina was significantly greater than the scredding marine grower, which is really surprising for many of the experiments we do. We're happy to match a commercial reference diet, indicating that there's something in spirulina that's not provided by either poultry byproduct meal or the fish meal. This slide shows the effect of diet on survival and the most notable thing is that when the fish meal free series with low or no added spirulina survival was poor it was about 70 percent as compared to 100 percent survival that we normally see in fish meal based diets in these experiments along with the scredding marine girl was 100 percent survival however with the added spirulina survival increased back up to the level equivalent to the fish meal based and the reference diet that is near 100% with the 30% added spirulina in the fish meal free diet. Again, showing that spirulina is carrying with it a nutrient that's not only important for growth, but also important for survival. And feed efficiency, we saw a similar trend with the, the fish fed the fish meal free diet with added spirulina having better feed efficiency than the fish meal based or the reference diet. So if we look at these three groups, if we go through and figure out what's in spirulina, then we can move the species from group three up to group two. And then if we determine what's in poultry meal, whether it's uh, amino acids or fatty acids, cholesterol, who knows at this point, then we can move those species from group two into group one. And instead of having species specific group, we'll be able to have plant-based diets with no animal products for carnivorous fish with good growth rate and feed efficiencies. 
That's the approach that we've taken. If there's any questions, I'd be glad to answer them. Thank you.